Well, praise the Lord, everybody. All right. Good morning. Good morning to you. We are so glad to be here on this morning. And as it was stated, we are talking about God loving this world. And today we're going to be talking about for God to love the what? Unclean. All right, we praise God for each of you here today. And I just want to say very quickly a quick, quick prayer. Father, we thank you for your blessing. We praise you for your mercy, your grace. Lord, speak. Let your Holy Ghost power move in this place on today. Amen. Amen. You know, when I thought about um, this subject matter on today, when I was um, approached about this, I was like, wow. Okay, what am I to say? And I thought for a moment and came up, the Lord put in my heart, he so loved the unclean. Now, most of us in here, we probably think, well, I'm clean. I've been washed in the blood. He has already done it in my life. Well, I just want you to take another look. I was thinking, uh, when I thought about this, I wanted to, think about uh, something in my life. You know, I remember the days when my children were still at home, they were under my care, and I was responsible for what they looked like when they walked out of the house. And you know, I always said, you got to be clean when you leave up out of this house. And you know why? Because you represented me. I don't want you going out this house looking, smelling, being any kind of way. <laughs> and especially for my boys. Sorry, Jeremiah. <laughs> but especially for my boys, I would double check them. I would always say, did you brush your teeth? Did you get behind your ears? You can't leave up out of here being dirty. You got to be clean. And so that brings us to uh, the scripture on today. One of the first scriptures we want to go into, and that's found in Luke, the eighth chapter, 43rd verse through the 49th verse. And it reads, now there was a woman who had been suffering from hemorrhages for 12 years. Everybody say hemorrhages with me. Hemorrhages. Yeah. If you don't know what that is, that's bleeding. She had a bleeding disorder. And though she had spent all she had on physicians, no one could cure her. Stop right there. No one could cure her. Just contemplate that. Think about that. Think about having a bleeding disorder and no one could cure her. She went to the specialist. Nobody could cure her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his clothes, and immediately her hemorrhages stopped. Then Jesus asked, who touched me? Mm. Now, for God so loved the unclean. Now, with that, there are different statuses, classes, and identities, you know, that this woman came up under. She came up under the area of not even being mentioned by name. She wasn't mentioned by name. The most important thing that was going on here, next slide, please, was her issues, what she was dealing with. In one translation, it says that the woman had an issue of blood. So she had issues. She had situations that she was dealing with. Now, her name was of no importance. I want you to get that, because some of us are so focused on who we are. Did they call my name? Where do I sit on the podium? Who put my name <laughs> on the ballot? All right. Well, she was dealing with Issues. I want you to think of issues. And if you're taking notes, write it down. Issues. She was suffering, one, from her condition. She was 
suffering. How many have been in a suffering way? Have been dealing with some things and you suffer. When you suffer, you are very uncomfortable. She was in pain. If you think about women, um, I got a whole room full of women in here, so you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. When you have those issues, when you have that hemorrhaging that happens, it's very painful. It can be painful. She was uncomfortable, and she was at a loss, constantly hemorrhaging. Now, I want you to think about the length of time that she was hemorrhaging, 12 long years. Uh-uh, not so. 12 long years. Years. There was a disorder that was going on in her life. For 12 years? You know, when you hemorrhage, you got to think. When you think of hemorrhaging, that is blood. That is your life source. So you mean she was losing her life for 12 long years? You mean she had it coming out of her? A little bit at a time, 12 long years. She had some issues. First of all, she was suffering. That's top on the list. Then she had pain that came along with that. Then she had loss of her life. Come on now, 12 long years. And guess what? That's a state of uncleanliness. 12 long years. I want you to think about in your mind, what is it that you're, you're dealing with? And you've been dealing with a long time. Some of us have been dealing with some stuff just a year, and we can't take it. 12 long years. Unclean. Now, I want you to think about the other point or her issue of her going to specialists. She went to doctors. I can imagine this woman probably was going to doctors week after week. And how many weeks are in a year? 52. Wow, 12 long years. Going to the specialist who can't even cure you. You going to folks talking to people who can't even help you. You telling them about your unclean state and they cannot even help you. Why? Because you feel like somebody got to be able to help me. And you know, we don't want to go to the one who truly can because we can't see him. I, I can't even hear him. He can't respond back. He don't understand. The Bible says that he was touched with the feelings of our infirmities, our uncleanliness, our, our sickness. My God. Now, here's the other point that she was dealing with. All of these are her issues. This is stuff she's dealing with. And you know what? It's a mental thing that's going on here. Not just physical, but it's a mental thing. It's a heart thing that's going on here. Oh, yeah. The other thing she dealt with was no cure. What? I'm in pain and can't nobody help me? I'm in pain, I'm in, sick, I'm in tor turmoil, and nobody can help me? No, there was no cure. What do you mean there's no cure? That means you got to deal with it. What, 12 long years? No, uh-uh, can't be. The other point was the point of isolation. She couldn't even go around. She couldn't go visit. She couldn't go on a girl's night out. She could not go to her family. She was un what? Clean. Wow. You mean I can't be with my best girls? You mean I can't go around and I can't touch nobody? No. Unclean. Isolation. What do you mean isolation? Nobody can be around you. Oh, my God. I thought about that thing. I was like, what? She became an outcast. Your issues will make you 
and outcast. It will isolate you. It will put you to the side. Have you ever been telling people about your situation and you feel like they just don't understand? I'm so isolated, I'm just off over in this corner by myself and I'm just dealing with it. Nobody can help me. You are like the woman with the issue of blood. You have issues. What is it that you are dealing with right now that puts you in an unclean state? I, I, I want to bring to your mind that this woman had issues that were unseen. Nobody saw them. It was hidden. It wasn't visible to, to the public. But I, I tell you this, if she got caught being out, she took the chance of being stoned, killed, uh -huh, and gotten rid of. Because you didn't, in that day, you did not come out when you were unclean. Mm. Here are some situations that she probably ran into in this unclean state, depression. My Lord. I told you it's a mental thing. It's a thing that's going on. She was set aside. She could have been depressed. How many have faced depression? Mm-hmm. Isolation. Mm-hmm. You become angry. That's what depression is, is your anger turned inside. You turning it inside on yourself. When people are depressed, all they do is think, think, think. Yeah. And they're thinking on what they're dealing with. They're thinking of their unclean state. They're thinking of those things that they can't control. Mm. How can I fix this? You know, I look a mess. Oh, I'm just so tired of myself. Oh, I'm tired of this situation. How can I get out? Then you get depressed. And then you go to bed. And then you don't want to get out the bed. Because you're dealing with your unclean situation. You may say, why is that unclean? It is. Because you haven't gotten in the face of Jesus to rectify what's going on. You are talking to people that can't help you. You are in the face of folks that can't do nothing about what you're dealing with. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then you get paranoid. Everybody looking at me. Why are you looking at me? She talking about me. They talking about me. Oh, my God. They, they see that I don't have no money. No, they don't. They talking about me because I didn't, I didn't stand to put the money in the offering. They don't know what's going on with you. It is hidden. Those are unclean thoughts. Anytime you turn anger on yourself, that is unclean. Come on. It's unclean. What are you dealing with? I want you to think. What are you dealing with? What am I doing? Hey, I'm in this thing with you. <laughs> we don't want to be unclean. She was going, and then you become a recluse. Oh, I don't. I, you want to go to dinner? Mm-mm. And know you hungry. Mm -mm, I don't want to go. No. I'm going home. Now, I'm not talking about the homebody people. I am homebody. <laughs> but I'm talking about when you have issues and you don't want anybody to see you. After all of these issues and points that I'm bringing out, you become reclusive. You become withdrawn. I don't want nobody to say nothing to me. I don't want nobody to see me. And then you walking around with a scowl on your face. Nobody will approach you. Nope, they're not coming because you're unclean. And now you, you become nasty. Woo! But in that verse, if we go back to the verse, the top portion of that verse, it says, she did not have anyone that could cure her. She came up behind Jesus and touched the fringe of his clothes. And immediately, if I could say it that way, immediately, her hemorrhages stopped. So something 
kicked into this woman. Something happened. I'm going to tell you, something has to happen to make you want to change your situation. Yeah, she came to her wit's end. She got to her wit's end. Have you ever been in a place where you say, enough is enough? I'm not having it no more. Uh uh, I can't do this no more. Well, she saw that she needed to change. This woman decided within herself, let's go to Mark 5 28, and I'm gonna give you scripture. Because it's not just me telling you a story. This is the word of God. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes. She wasn't even supposed to be out in public, y'all. But she decided, because I've had enough. I've had 12 long years of this. I've been in this mess too long. How many been in it too long? I've been dealing with it too long. I've been looking at it too long. I don't want to see it no more. I don't want to have the pain no more. I am going to Jesus, and if I can only touch his clothes, I shall be made well. How many want to be made well? How many want to be clean? Oh, if I could just get to Jesus, he will take away this pain. If I could just get to Jesus... Uh-huh. He will deal with my issues. Because, see, these specialists, they ain't doing nothing for me. These folks I'm talking to can't help me. Facebook ain't doing nothing for me. Why am I going on Facebook and airing out all of my problems? Ooh. Get off the book of faces. All right. Can't nobody help you. All they're going to do is read your short story, click it, copy, paste, and share. Come on. Who's healing you on Facebook? Who's healing you on Instagram? Who's healing you on TikTok? <laughs> nobody. Absolutely nobody. I'm going to get to Jesus. You got to say something. Woo, you got to stop that thinking and turning anger on the inside and tearing up your own self, your unclean self. I got to get to Jesus. She didn't just think about it no more. Woo, she said it with her mind. She might have said it out of her mouth. She said it. And then what did she do? She did something. She pressed through the crowd. I told you her issues were not visible. Uh-uh. Some of us are dealing with stuff that's not visible. We come in here every Sunday, every week. Can't nobody see what's going on with you. Only if God gives you a spirit of discernment, you pick up something's wrong, but they don't know the whole issue. The only one that knows the whole entire issue is Jesus. And you got to say on the inside of you, in your spirit, I must just touch woo, the fringes or the hem of his garment. If I could just do that, I know I will be made well. I will be cured. I will be made whole. Because these book, book of faces can't help me. These people out there. Nobody can help me but Jesus. Woo! Some of us have been dealing with some stuff for a long, long, long time. Woo! We've been dealing with ourself. Low self-esteem. Hmm. Woo! Come on. Worried about what somebody's saying about you. This stuff was hidden deep in her heart. My God. Now, I want to bring some things that you might just be dealing with. Deceitfulness, spirit of perversion, doubt, fear, unfaithfulness to God, and jealousy. Unclean. Can you say unclean? Woo! 
You in here shouting, praising the Lord, clapping hands, jumping. And you're deceitful. Got a spirit of perversion. Whoa. Come on. Whoa. Because see, can't nobody see that. It's hidden. My God. Spirit of fear. Doubt. Come on. Y'all think that's clean? No. The Bible said he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of what? Love. Woo. For God so loved the who? Unclean. Wow. Now, that was the hidden, hidden, hidden uncleanliness. Now we're going to move on to some, another group of people. Come on. Luke 17, 11, 19. Got your Bibles? Go there. Look on the screen. Now. On his way to Jerusalem, Jesus traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men, everybody say ten, who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Master, have pity or compassion on us. When he saw them, he said, go, show yourselves to the priests. As they went, they were cleansed. Everybody say cleansed. Yes. One of them, when he saw he was healed, when he realized that a change had happened, he came back praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. The Bible doesn't mention things just haphazardly. He wants you to know. This man was a Samaritan. Jesus asked, were not all ten cleansed? Where are the other nine? Has no one returned to give praise to God except this foreigner? Then he said to him, rise and go. Your faith has made you well. Now let's dig into this. One touch from Jesus immediately cleanses you. One don't take two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times coming to the altar, somebody laying hands on you. It takes one touch from Jesus. We're not telling you not to come to the altar, but you got to have faith. This woman with the issue of blood previously had faith. She believed and she said and she did. Now, these 10 Lepers. Now, if you know anything about leprosy, it is a treacherous disease. It goes in and it decays your skin. Yeah, parts may fall off. Sorry, don't want to be so graphic, but that's leprosy. It goes in and it has, uh, uh, it, ha it fights against you. Well, these. Ten lepers, and, and they had to stay away from everyone. And here's the deal. With, with leprosy, they had their own place that they had to live. They didn't even live with their family. They had their own camp that they had to go to. Well, these ten men, these ten lepers, saw Jesus. And what did they do? They called to him. They kept their distance because by law, they had to keep their distance. But they called to Jesus. And look what they called him. They called him master. No one in that day called anyone master or Jesus master unless they were his disciples. So you mean the lepers? Could they have been following Jesus afar? <laughs> are you following Jesus or are you following somebody else? Are you following uh, just the, the leadership here or are you following the Jesus of the leadership here? That's how you follow leadership. You follow the Jesus that's in them. Are you following? These lepers must have been following, calling him master. And they said, have pity or compassion. You know what compassion is? It's enough love for a person that you take on. 
you take on and you do something. Jesus has the power to do what? Take on your issues. Take on your uncleanliness. One touch from Jesus will cleanse you. These people were segregated. They lived in camps alone. They were, they visibly had uncleanliness. You could see their uncleanness. You can see it on them. Mm. Their body was decaying. They were called untouchable, undesirable. They were ridiculed. People shouted, unclean. Ooh, would you want somebody hollering unclean when you walk by? <laughs> Nobody could be around them, so they hollered, unclean, unclean. That is humiliating. But that was their situation. Those were their issues. Now take a look at yourself. See where you have visible uncleanliness in you. I'll name a few. Pride. Nasty attitude. Nasty disposition. Self-righteous. <laughs> Manipulative. Ooh. I know it's going to be a little quiet in here today. Respect of persons, because this show was hitting me. Those are visible. You may think that's not visible, but that's visible. Pride be sitting on people. You can see it when they walk, can't you? I know you can. Nasty attitude. That comes right on out. Visible. Un clean, Poof. manipulative, you all in here just moving parts around, yeah, I'm going to make them do this, uh-huh, I'm going to see how I'm going to work that thing out, mm-hmm, that's visible, <laughs> and respect the person, nah, I ain't fooling with her, I'm not inviting her, check off the list, respect the person, Visible, ain't it? Yeah. Woo! But look at here. These lepers had faith. Just like the woman had faith, they did too. They had enough faith to call out to Jesus. Do you have enough faith to call on your Lord? Say, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need you to clean me, whether it be visible or hidden. And most of us got some, a whole bunch of hidden stuff. I know I didn't name them all. I know I didn't bring it all out, but it's in there. It's tucked in. And then some of us are so visible just walking around thinking nobody sees it. But they do. They may be a recipient of your nastiness. They feel in the pressure of you. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Wow. But you know what? You got to come to Jesus. You got to come clean. Now, Jesus became, I want to tell you what Jesus did. He so loved the world. He so loved us. He so loved the unclean that he became unclean for you. He became unclean for you. Let's go to Matthew 8, 1 through 4. When Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. A man with leprosy came. Another man with leprosy, he came and he knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, I want to stop right here. The difference between this leper and the other lepers, some, the other lepers stood back and hollered out. Some of us, when we come in church, they say, open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. What you do? Can't nobody hear you. They opened their mouth and cried aloud. <laughs> when you want something, 
You got to open your mouth and you got to say something. You got to project. I'm just quiet. No, you're not. Because when you're with your friends, we can't help but hear you. Right? I know. Because you're hollering, so you have to open your mouth. And this leper went up close and personal with Jesus. He got all up in his face. He knelt down at his feet. What do you mean? He shouldn't be nowhere near Jesus. He should be nowhere near anyone. But he came up close and personal, got in front of Jesus, and he confronted Jesus. That's what he did, y'all. He said, Lord, if you are willing, he said, if you're willing, you can make me clean. You can do this thing. I know you can. If you're willing. Evidently, the leper was willing to sacrifice, wasn't he? Uh-huh. To get his cleanliness. What are you willing to sacrifice to be made whole? What are you willing to do? What are you, will you fast? Will you pray? Will you obey when he tell you to fast? Or you just go on to the next week. I, I, I catch it next week. He said fast because he knows that there's something that needs to be changed in your life. You need to be healed. You need to be clean. You need to be made whole. He went to Jesus and said, if you are willing, you can make me clean. Jesus reached out his hand. Look at Jesus. Knows that he's not supposed to touch lepers. But look at Jesus. Reached out and touched his hand. He touched the man. And what did Jesus say? I am willing. If you are willing, I'll be willing. If you will sacrifice, I'll do it for you. I am willing. Be clean, he said two words. Be clean. What did he say? Be clean. Two words. Be clean and immediately. Everybody say immediately. Y'all want to get out of your pain? You want to be clean? You want to be washed? You want to be changed? You want to be right? You want to be made? You want to be whole? That's part of a song. Yeah. I do. Well, you need to get to Jesus because it will happen immediately. He cleansed this man of his leprosy. Woo, this leper had faith. He had faith. And he did what? Put a demand on God's word. Who was the word? Jesus was the word. The Bible says it. That Jesus is the word. So this leper put a demand. He said, if you're willing. What demand are you putting on the word? Are you even opening the book? Are you opening the book to find out what's in the word so you can give it back to Jesus so that it will change your life? God stands by his word. Whew, Jesus, and when you put a demand on the word, yeah, yeah. The Bible says God so loved what? The world. Put a demand on it. Jesus, you love me. If you're willing, will you help me? Jesus said, I will. <laughs> and told him to be clean. Woo! The word had compassion on him. We want compassion from our God. The word had compassion on him and spoke back to him. Won't the word speak to you? Woo! Won't the word go right into situations that nobody knows about? Won't it get in there? Said the word is quick, is powerful, is sharper than any two-edged sword. Woo! It will cut. It will go in between like the joint and the marrow of the bone. Who sees that? Yeah, there you go. Somebody said the word. Yes, the word sees it. We can't see it, but Jesus can. The word had compassion on him. Ooh, and he spoke two words to his decaying situation. The word spoke to his 
decaying situation. People can't do it, y'all. Can't nobody help you but Jesus? Can't nobody heal you, clean you, feel you but Jesus? Nobody. Whew. We think, oh, I'm in love. Oh, once I get with this one and that one, we will live happily ever after. And whatever was bothering me will be changed. They will make up the difference in my life. Let me tell you something. <laughs> that ain't happening. <laughs> it is only Jesus. Oh, my God. They will clean you, fix you, heal you, put you in the right place, change your mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go in those places that that marriage cannot do. I mean, it's good. It's, you know, I'm not knocking marriage, but you know what I'm saying. Okay. So only Jesus can do this thing. Only. Only Jesus. All right, y'all. Lost my notes, so here we go. Only Jesus can do it. <laughs> He's the only, way that, the only one that can fix your heart, change your mind, clean you up. Won't he make you clean? On the inside. Yeah, see, I'm one where, you know, I got, I got to be smelling good, looking good, all that kind of stuff. And don't want to go around nobody that, you know, is not so put together. <laughs> but it's for real. And so, you know, uh, but you could be all put together on the outside and your heart needs to be cleaned. It needs to be washed. It needs to be changed. Yes, that's what he wants. It's a heart thing. God wants to get into your heart. He wants to wash you. He wants to make you whole. Notes came back. He wants to fill you. Whew. The master, your Lord and your Savior, took on your uncleanness. He took it on. <laughs> he became filthy for you. Oh, shade, my God. He took that man's leprosy. The man walked away whole. But Jesus, according to the law, now was unclean. Glory to God. Glory to God. He wants to take on. <laughs> he said, cast all your care upon me, for I care for you. He has compassion for you. He wants to fill you. He wants to change you. Whew. Acknowledgement of your uncleanliness exposes your heart to God. When you acknowledge, Lord, I'm unclean. Lord, I'm nasty. Yeah, I am. Oh, God, I'm manipulative. Oh, I am. Lord, I'm fearful. Yes, I am. Oh, God, I'm really unfaithful to you. Yes, I am. When you acknowledge, when you acknowledge it, then your heart is open. It's exposed to God. And he say, aha, that's what I want. Right there, I want your heart. See, it's a heart thing. It's, it's all about you getting in and getting close to God. Yeah. But look at, look at Jesus and look how much God loved the unclean that Jesus became unclean for you. Mm -hmm. You know, the messages previously, God to love the world, God to love the sinner. You know, we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And now God loves the unclean. This is stuff that 
It's on the inside. This is an inside job that has to take place. Mm-hmm. All of us in here are really at a point of uncleanliness. Yeah. Yeah, he washed us, he saved us, he filled us. But every day, we have to go back to him. Every day. Say, God, please. You know, you don't have to really beg him, just give him the word, Lord, clean me up. <laughs> you know, I want you to fix me. Master, call him master. Uh-huh. Call him master. Say, Abba, Father. Ooh, that's a term of endearment. Abba, Father. And if you didn't grow up with your father, ask him to show you how to see him as your father. I had to do it. Abba, Father, here's my heart. I need you to clean me, Lord. Hey. I need you to fix me, Jesus. I need you to wash me. Uh -huh. I need you to purge me. We're going to close right here. And I just want to read the word. What better way to close but give you what God is saying? It says, have mercy on me in Psalms 51, 1 and 2, and verse 7. Have mercy on me. Oh, God. According to your unfailing love. According to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my hidden sin, iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 7, cleanse me with hyssop, and I will. I'll say that again. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will. Be clean. Wash me. Wash me. Wash me. Wash me. And I shall. I will be whiter than snow. Glory to your name. For God so loved the unclean. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yes, God. Woo. Now I want you to take a look at yourself. And if you have found yourself Anywhere, I mean anywhere in this message, come down to the altar and ask God to do it again in you, to wash you, to make you clean, to make you whole, to have compassion, oh God, on you so that you can be a brand new creature again. This is something you have to do over and over and over and over. It's not a one-time deal. He's got to wash you. He's got to make you clean. Won't he make you clean on the inside? Yes, he will. My God. I thank God for doing it again in me. He will wash you. 
and make you whole. For God so loved the unclean. For God so loved, he gave. When you love, you give. He gave his only begotten son and he became unclean for you and me. Hey everybody, thank you for listening to the message today. I hope that you were blessed and encouraged. Remember, life is worth living and the rest of your life is the best of your life. Have an amazing day.